so here we have iFlyRC that comes I power the force IF 2205 2300 KV uh, yes that's the full not name uh, the force IF 2205 and this one is uh, uh, the new motor from iFly, iflyrc.com uh, they sent it in uh, for review uh, thanks for sending it uh, so it's uh, it, uh, I'd say this is a uh, false right in the mid budget uh, uh, region uh, it, it does have a lot of the uh, uh, the new features that uh, most uh, modern motors have so they've, they've included a lot of the a lot of the good features uh, so some of them uh, let's go over them quickly uh, 0.2 millimeter laminations on the stator uh, it does have uh, yeah, what they're saying these are genuine NMB Japanese bearings. They do have the NMB markings, and they do look uh, uh, they do look pretty good. I didn't see any fishy stuff in there, so so yeah, I'm thinking these are genuine. Uh, they look pretty much like all the other NMB bearings that I've seen on the DYS motors. Uh, magnets are N52 and uh, they are these motors the motor bell as you can see is dynamically balanced at the factory there's the blue mud blue balancing mud right there uh, shaft is a uh, one piece steel and it is uh, it is hollow uh, partially hollow uh, it's hollow all there and hollow there so it seems like it's solid from here towards the transition point right here where, where it, it's turned down into from 5 to 4 millimeter so the shaft I is 4 millimeter uh, shaft here and it's held down in place by uh, one of those uh, circlips which are kind of hard to remove but uh, 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 they're not impossible to remove you just gotta fidget with them a lot uh, Windings are single strand wire, uh, somewhat uh, thick wire, I would say. And well, not overly thick, but I mean, it's it's not thin either. Uh, and uh, they're saying it's a high grade wire. Their windings are not too bad, uh, not the prettiest I've seen, but it, they're not too bad. Uh, they look all right. Uh, they do bulge out a little bit uh, here on top and the bottom uh, so usually uh, that that's what happens when you use a uh, single strand wire so no way to avoid that uh, and uh, uh, what else let's see bottom is just your standard uh, bolt pattern and uh, seems to be pretty serviceable it was easy to remove the bell and uh, bearings should be easy to remove with the you know just the usual method it's just you punch them out with the with with a punch just kind of put it sideways like that and tap it right here so that they should be okay to remove uh, you, you do see a little bit of a rough finish here on the shaft uh, where it was turned on the lathe I think there these are about thirteen dollars each I think uh, so you know it's uh, you can expect a top grade everything so so for the price range uh, it's pretty pretty good uh, feels pretty good okay so if you're able to see right there uh, the air gap between the magnets and the stator it's a uh, it's not the closest gap I've seen 
so you know that goes hand in hand with the most uh, budget motors will you know they won't be the tolerances won't be as tight as as some of the other uh, premium motors uh, those, those costing 15 16 20 dollars and above but and not too bad you know uh, that uh, that does affect the uh, overall performance uh, the closer gap the closer the gap the more the more power the motor is going to make but uh, it's not too bad uh, i'd say it is right in line with the uh, with this pr uh, target price so let's look at the weight they're saying it's about 30 grams with the wires I'll remove the prop nut so yeah 30.5 and that's with the uh, with about uh, 90 millimeter worth of wire so if you trim it if you have the ESCs on on the arms it should be around 30 grams so uh, not the lightest but uh, not that heavy either so again right in line with the target price I think so overall uh, feels like a pretty decent motor so let's see how it performs on the thrust stand and so we can see how it compares with uh, other motors all right thrust tests are coming up So here we have the results for the iPower IF 2205-2300 kV motor. Uh, uh, this one's actually 2400 kV as measured on the RC benchmark thrust stand. Uh, so higher kV, it's going to give it uh, higher uh, thrust, but also at uh, higher amps. So those three go kind of uh, hand in hand, uh, higher kV higher thrust and higher amps uh, so you end up with uh, less torque so when you get to the larger props uh, sometimes you, you you might get higher thrust but the amps are gonna are gonna get uh, quite high as the motor uh, uh, doesn't have enough, a lot of torque so it's gonna use more amps to, to drive the props so anyway, uh, let's quickly look at uh, some of the results here. Uh, four inch props, uh, pretty respectable numbers, uh, close to one kilogram. Uh, around 25 amps for the uh, triple blade, four inch, not too bad. And uh, as we move to the more popular 5040 by three, uh, 1300 grams at 34 amps, that's pretty good, pretty respectable. Uh, it's only when we move to the more aggressive props that uh, we start to see uh, uh, somewhat of a jump in uh, in amps. Uh, so, for instance, the Dow C5046 uh, 
uh, we are getting a pretty decent amount of thrust but uh, you know the apps are gonna get higher anyways this this prop is quite a battery hog as as we all know uh, six inch props on 4s uh, they, they they do make a lot of thrust on this motor but uh, the amps are getting a little bit too unruly here uh, and the motor was getting kind of hot at these uh, power levels but I'm I'm sure that uh, it sh it should not get hot uh, once you once you get in the air you know it, uh, once you get flying it's not gonna it's not gonna get that hot so so yeah don't don't mind these uh, huge numbers it, it, it you know it'll it, it'll be a lot less uh, in order of uh, about 35% less so so it, and with the air moving and all that uh, it, it should be okay but I just wanted to make the uh, point that out because of the the higher the higher KV and plus other factors. The motor does did get a little bit hot on this uh, compared to other motors. All right, so comparing it to the Emax, uh, let's do the 5040 by three prop. Uh, keep in mind this is uh, about 100 KV uh, higher KV than the Emax. So for the 5040 by three, uh, this. This one I did use a DYS, but it's it's about the same as a HQ in performance. So we can see they're pretty much about the same, same level of performance on the HQ 5040x3. Uh, on the DYS 5040x4, we're seeing uh, 1352 on the Emax and 1377 at about two more amps. So that's that's pretty much in line with the higher KV, 2400 KV. Uh, so it's pulling more amps, uh, but you do get a little bit more thrust. And when we go to the six inch props, this is where the where the Emax pulls away, uh, you know, due to the a more more refined construction on the Emax. Uh, again, keep in mind this is a mid budget low budget type of motor uh, it is only about uh, what is it like five to six dollars less than the emax so uh, so here we can see the six on the on the 16 prop the emax pulls away and it's uh, actually a uh, little bit better on the amperage so so yeah that's that's I guess uh, suspected as the Emax has better tolerances and just overall better construction. If you're looking for a mid-budget motor, uh, this this would be a this would be a good choice. Uh, it's pretty pretty respectable numbers and uh, some pretty good uh, components. Uh, bearing looks like it has good bearings and uh, seems to have pretty good construction. Of course. Uh, we need to have a long-term use to see how durable it is. Uh, at this point, uh, we're just going by by just uh, what I've observed uh, when I tear down the motor. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on the reports, uh, see how these motors uh, last long-term. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.